In this cap, we'll start by reviewing some key terms related to oral reading fluency. Then we'll define a new term related to assessment, words correct per minute. We'll walk you through the basic process of assessing oral reading fluency in each of the three main components of fluency, accuracy, rate, and prosody. Finally, we'll briefly look at how oral reading fluency assessments can be used in curriculum-based measurement and progress monitoring. The information presented in this video is focused on classroom-level, teacher-led, and teacher-designed assessments of oral reading fluency, rather than administering standardized assessments like the Dibbles or Ames Web. Let's start by reviewing key terms. We define reading fluency as the accurate reading of connected text at a conversational rate with appropriate prosody. The three main components from that definition are accuracy, rate, and prosody. Accuracy is the number of words read correctly. Rate is the number of words read correctly per minute. And prosody is the expressiveness of oral reading. In this video, we will also refer to curriculum-based measurement, or CBMs. CBM is an assessment method that teachers use to find out and keep track of students' progress towards an individual goal for a specific academic skill. Now let's define the new term that you need to know. One of the most common and most reliable ways that teachers measure students' oral reading fluency is in terms of rate, or words correct per minute. This is a calculation of the student's reading rate and includes its accuracy. It's important to keep in mind that this is not simply measuring how fast students read a text. As you can see from the steps shown here, calculating words correct per minute takes accuracy into account. We will work through an example of how to calculate this later in the video. Now, let's look at the big ideas that we're going to address throughout the rest of this video. First, as we said in the definition of oral reading fluency, teachers can assess each of these three main components of fluency. Teachers use the data that they collect from these assessments to track students' progress and to select appropriate texts to use in fluency instruction. Assessing oral reading fluency is an essential tool that helps teachers and specialists identify students who are having trouble learning to read and may be at risk of later reading failure. The process of conducting oral reading fluency assessments can be summarized in these three steps. We will take a closer look at each of these. The first thing to do before conducting these assessments is to select an appropriate text. The text that you select should be an appropriate length and difficulty for the individual student. This decision can be based on previously collected data, baseline data from CBM, or from calculating students' reading accuracy. Reading accuracy is a simpler and quicker calculation than words correct per minute. You can briefly determine the approximate level of the text difficulty for the student based on a measure of the student's reading accuracy. Let's work through an example. Alexandra read three one-minute passages to her teacher today. We'll calculate her reading accuracy for each passage and compare that to these guide levels. Accuracy is just a simple percentage. We divide the number of words read correctly by the total number of words that she read and multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. So for passage one, Alexandra read a total of 100 words but made 14 errors. If we subtract the errors, that leaves 86 words read correctly. As a percentage, her accuracy for this passage was 86%. Repeat those steps to get her accuracy for the other passages shown here. Now we can decide which passages are appropriate for Alexandra to continue to practice reading. In this example, Alexandra read passage 3 with about 95% accuracy, so that one would be at her independent level of difficulty. Passage 1, and other texts similar to it, would be too difficult for Alexandra right now. Ideally, as she receives more instruction and practice, she will later be able to read passage 3 or text like it at an instructional or an independent level. Passage 2 would be a good choice for using in fluency practice and instruction with Alexandra. Other texts with similar features, like length and decodability, would also be good for her. Now that we know what texts we should use with our student, we can make decisions about what fluency components we need to assess. Accuracy and rate can be counted and calculated. Prosody, or expression, is assessed with a rating scale, checklist, or rubric. Using words correct per minute gives the teacher the most reliable data for progress monitoring. 
you can calculate both accuracy and rate from the same assessment session and the same reading passage, which is convenient. Using both of these kinds of data will provide a clearer picture of the student's present level of performance, as well as progress towards a specific fluency goal if they have one. We'll come back to accuracy and rate shortly, but first let's talk about measuring prosody or expression. To evaluate this component, teachers use subjective ratings like checklists, rubrics, or rating scales. Here's one example from the National Assessment of Educational Progress. These tools may be highly detailed or not. This example is not very detailed, but could be used very quickly. Rubric assessments are flexible, and the teacher can fit the assessment tool to the student's specific areas of need. Of course, it's important to remember that these tools are subjective. Also, most are not standardized or normed. Still, these are important and useful assessment tools for measuring reading prosody. We have already discussed how to calculate reading accuracy as a percentage. Now, we'll work on measuring reading rate using words correct per minute. Let's return to our fictional student, Alexandra, and the data we've already collected about her reading accuracy. The first step is to convert the total time it took Alexandra to read the passage to a decimal so we can use it in our calculation. In this case, the teacher had Alexandra read each passage for just one minute, so we know that the reading time in decimal form is 1.0 minutes. Now we can plug that into the formula. We again use the number of words that she read correctly, which was 86 for passage number one. Divide that by the reading time and we get Alexandra's rate for that passage. 86 words correct per minute. Here's the same calculation completed for the other two texts that Alexandra read in that session. Let's try this once more with a new text and new data. Two days later, the teacher assessed Alexandra again with a new text. This time, she did not stop Alexandra after one minute, but timed how long it took her to finish reading the passage. First, we need to know how many words she read correctly, so let's figure out her accuracy for that text. Subtract the number of errors from the total number of words that she read, in this case, the total number of words in the passage, and we get 152 words read correctly. So Alexandra's accuracy on that passage was 85.4%. Based on that, the teacher probably needs to select a less challenging text for her to use next. Now let's calculate the words correct per minute. First, we'll convert the reading time, two minutes, 34 seconds, into a decimal. To do that, start by converting everything into seconds. Two minutes and 34 seconds equals 154 seconds. Then to get back into minutes and into a decimal, we can use in our formula, divide 154 by 60. We get 2.57. Alexandra read that passage in 2.57 minutes. Now we can plug that into the rate equation. 152 words read correctly divided by 2.57 minutes equals 59.1 words correct per minute. Of course, what the teacher does next with this data is very important, so now what? What do these data mean for Alexandra and for her teacher? Even though Alexandra's teacher did not use a nationally standardized assessment, she can still compare Alexandra's data to standardized scoring norms to get a general idea of where Alexandra's performance is. Grade level norms for reading rate in words correct per minute will tell the teacher at approximately what grade level Alexandra is reading. However, it's important to remember that norms and standards come from tests that may have inherent implicit cultural bias. Grade level norms should not be the only way that Alexandra's teacher evaluates or reports her reading performance. The last step in our process is to record our data and look for any trends that tell us how the student is progressing towards her goal or not. Here is the CBM graph for Alexandra's reading accuracy. We have added fictional dates and more data points in order to illustrate this example more clearly. The first four texts that Alexandra read were at the beginning of the school year prior to receiving core instruction in fluency or decoding, so these are considered Alexandra's baseline data. Draw a vertical line on the graph to show where the baseline data ends and the instructional intervention was started. Based on the baseline data, Alexandra's teacher set a reading accuracy goal of 90% or better for her once she was getting the instruction that she needed. If Alexandra's accuracy improves with that instruction, the teacher can then set a new goal. 
If it doesn't improve, then the teacher can make the necessary changes to her instructional plan for Alexandra. We can monitor Alexandra's progress in reading rate in the same way, by graphing. Again, mark the graph where the baseline data ended and the instructional intervention began. The teacher also set a reading rate goal of 80 words correct per minute based on Alexandra's baseline data. Just like with the data for her reading accuracy, the teacher can make decisions about the goal and the instruction that Alexandra needs as she monitors her progress and collects additional data. In many early elementary classrooms, students' oral reading fluency is assessed at regular points throughout the year. By using this process each time, the teacher can collect reliable data, track progress, make informed instructional decisions, and use the information to communicate with parents and other teachers or specialists, and update students' IEPs as needed. Now let's review everything we covered in this cap. We defined words correct per minute as the unit we use to reliably express students' reading rate. This measure is often used in progress monitoring and CBM assessment. Using a fictional student scenario, we demonstrated each step of the process for oral reading fluency assessments. The examples that we worked through illustrated each of the three big ideas that we established at the beginning of the video. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.